During this past year, I have been completely changing and moving from being emotionally unavailable to being emotionally available because actually one of the reasons why we do feel attracted to emotionally unavailable people is because we are emotionally unavailable ourselves. And this took me so long to realize. Um, but one of the things that I noticed that I really struggled with was wanting to be chosen. The worst part is really having our mood and our happiness constantly dependent on how the relationship goes or how the other person feels towards us. So if they like us and everything is fine, we feel so happy, we feel like this high of happiness, but then when things don't, we just completely lose um, that sense of happiness and especially that sense of worthiness. And that is just painful because we are still not totally anchored in our own sense of worthiness. And so if someone doesn't choose us and reject us and abandons us, we go right back to our original wounds, to the pain that maybe we are not really enough or to the fear that someone not choosing us, rejecting us is actually proof of our unworthiness. And this is a condition of coming from a home where we were never mirrored or validated as children. It just creates a lot of self-doubt and that's why today we are still looking for that external confirmation to confirm something that is still uncertain on the inside. But when we struggle with feeling desperate to be chosen, those feelings are not actually about the other person, but rather a calling for us to choose ourselves. It's not really the approval that we are waiting for, it's our own. It's a deep need to self-belong and a, a need for our own validation. The hardest part is that we have to move through the pain that we feel in order to get there. That's why healing is so hard. That's why relationships can be such a blessing. No relationship is a failed relationship if you can learn from it. That's why you have to look at the pain that is making you choosing them so you can guide you back to your wounds. I did so much eventually of this inner work and shadow work that I was able to let go of all the harmful beliefs that I created about myself to make sense of my childhood and the abuse that I received. Because as I said before, all, ch all children need a sense of worthiness to be mirrored back to them in order for us to believe that we are worthy of love. When that doesn't happen and the treatment that we receive is abusive and neglectful, we internalize that as our fault um, in order to make sense of it, in order to protect ourselves from fear of survival. And that's how the unworthiness wound is born. So today we abandon ourselves in order to be chosen because we are still not totally sure of our own worth in order for us to completely choose ourselves. Usually when we want to be chosen by someone is because we are projecting onto them a part of ourselves that we still haven't reclaimed. That's why shadow work is so important. And by doing that, I really learned to reclaim for myself whatever I was projecting onto the other person. And even though this sounds very amazing and fun, it is a very hard process, a very painful one, because you have to look at the parts of yourself that you believe are not enough and are not really worthy of love, worthy of being chosen. So let me give you a personal example that <laughs> is, I'm just going to expose myself, but why not? I feel that First of all, I'm not embarrassed and I'm not ashamed of who I was in the past or the way that I behaved. I'm really proud of myself for surviving and moving through the pain that I felt, did the best that I could in order to survive. Um, and I feel that my story can definitely inspire others to move through their own pain. And that's what I wish for with my work, of course. And also using my own gift of seeing wounds and just mirroring back patterns of behavior and stuff and doing inner child healing with people on my own coaching. Um, so, sorry for promoting myself, but why wouldn't I promote something that I truly believe in? But anyway, so the example is about a year ago, or actually more than a year ago, I thought, you know, I was really interested in this guy that was really beautiful naturally. And I was a person, especially before my healing, that I really blamed my physical appearance for being rejected and abandoned. Because usually society really helps us to do that, right? Like, oh, you're not pretty enough, or you're not 
whatever it was, right? And because I was um, quite good in school and stuff like that, I never thought that was the problem, but rather the fact that I, I lacked beauty or whatever it is, you know, you just create all of these beliefs about yourself. And so I wanted so much that person to choose me so I could feel the natural beauty about myself. Do you see what I'm saying? If that person that was so naturally beautiful could love me, then they approved of me and I could feel about myself whatever I was projecting onto him. Can you see that? So from the moment where I was abandoned and rejected, I still, I was actually used a lot of makeup, a lot. Like one day I will have to show pictures and stuff because to really prove <laughs> um, my point because I was really broken and I was really, really wounded. And, and I feel like it also inspires people to see, my own clients usually tell me it's an inspiration to see where I can get to, you see, and how possible it is. Because it was really a process to love myself how I am naturally. And, you know, and to, today it's crazy even to think like that for me, but it really was. I hated myself to the point of wanting to completely change the way I looked, wanting to do plastic surgery, so much stuff. And, and that's why today so many people struggle with that, thinking that that's the problem when in reality it's our own wounds. But anyway, I don't even know if I'm going to put this part in the video, but hopefully if I do, it can help somehow and inspire you. And I remember feeling so sceptical um, before getting to this point, because I remember hearing people say, uh, you know, in the healing community saying, oh, when you really love yourself, you'll never choose a person or feel attracted to a person who doesn't like you. And I thought, mm, is that really how it works? Because it just sounds too good to be true. But it really is. Because when we know our worth, no place or person will be appealing to us unless they are good to us. And see, this also applies to places, to environments, because before I would stay for so long in places where I didn't fit in, where I wasn't really welcomed or accepted. And that is very painful um, because we think it's our fault that we're not really being accepted. So we just end up abandoning ourselves and abandoning our needs in order to be accepted by this group or this place. And then we just end up feeling deep loneliness because we're not even being accepted for who we truly are. I remember, But I remember feeling so terrified of people turning against me and taking my happiness away from me that I was, just, I was a huge people pleaser because of that. And I was always so worried about other people's happiness and feelings. And that is also uh, the condition of coming from a home with narcissistic abuse, which I will talk in another video. But always remember that no place and no relationship should ever require you to lose yourself. The reason why the invalidation feels so natural is because it's all we've ever known. But at the end of the day, it's not really about their capacity to choose us. It's about our capacity to choose ourselves.